It's so good to be here today. You may know or not know, but this is my last Sunday as a, a ministry member of this church. Um, it's not my last Sunday preaching. <laughs> I will be back. <laughs> um, this is, Mossa Bay is my hometown. I will always, people always come back home at some point or another, but it's good to be here today. Um, just so you know, there are tears in this message. I'm just owning it right up front. Um, I was talking to Pastor Pedro the other day and I said, like, I cry so much. And he's like, don't worry, the Bible speaks more about men crying than women crying. So you cry. So don't tell your boys, boys don't cry because the Bible says something different, okay? It, you know, today I'm speaking a message called One Day When. And you know, this message is coming from a lot of things. I haven't managed to get through the full message yet. Um, but I believe that we live our lives waiting for one day when, when circumstances are right. We wait for one day when, you know, we have enough money. One day when we know more, when we have qualifications, when all these things we wait for, where God has called us to live in this day, live in this moment, to take everything that we have from it and to move in it. Today is... Actually, my one day win, me and Lali's one day win, um, as we leave New Life Church, we go to lead a church that we're going to lead. <laughs> it's, weird, it? it's still weird. I still feel like I need to get Pastor Zane's permission on stuff at church. <laughs> Two months into leadership, I'll still be asking him for budget. <laughs> um, but yeah, this message comes from... Genesis. In Genesis, we're introduced to many characters, but a character that we're introduced to very shortly is a man named Enoch. And Enoch, I, you know, the real pronunciation is Enoch. You've got to have a bit of flame in it. For the Buddha, it's easy. But Enoch, um, I just say the Italian way, like Noki, you know, Enoch. When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah great names. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch gave, lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years. This guy had birthdays. Imagine how many times he would have gotten a free ice cream at Spur or something like that. <laughs> they would have made all his money back. When I was little, we used to just go to Spurs so they could sing happy birthday to us. In fact, we went through this horrible phase where we used to go to Spur and tell them it was other people's birthdays that it wasn't. And the Spur people just said, uh, we heard a rumor on this day all the way. And he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. If you read in the King James Version, you'll hear one day Enoch was, one day he was not. God took him. Enoch lived so closely with God that he lived heaven on earth. He lived days of heaven because he walked with God. He knew God. We know so little about this man because he's just given this small passage here in Genesis and mentioned a few other times. But Enoch, we understand that he lived a life that was so close to God that he was walking with God. And we'd love to think of this as just poetic or whatever, but the, the real translation is here, walk, take one step in front of another. Every step he took, he took with God. He lived his life in line with God's Word and in step with His Spirit. So much that he was near to God that he, when, he, when his time was up, God just took him. In fact, I've even heard Dale Moody says he believes that Enoch didn't even age. He believed that Enoch stayed this glorified human because he was so close to God. So maybe that's a better idea than Botox, you know? Do some devotions, see if you, your skin stays younger. People ask me why I look so good. <laughs> devotions. 
Walking with God is so important to daily living. You know, if, it, it, you know when, you, when you prepare a message like this, it's very difficult to think about what you're going to preach about and it's got to be significant and it's got to be huge. But really the simple message I have for you today is walk with God. Walk with Him. That you may know His voice. That you may hear His voice. That one day when you go to heaven, He's just going to take you to heaven. And it's not going to be anything different to you because you've walked it here on earth. I, I came to this church when I was 10 years old. Small building next door. And uh, we came because of the children's ministry. You know, Auntie Lola was in charge of children's ministry then. And this children's ministry was progressive. You know, we had a felt board. Some of you don't even know what that is, but Enoch Bible stories were told to me on felt boards. And we sang, we, sang, we sang songs that I knew from my traditional church where we sang them with a spin. You remember, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, burning. You know, some of you know that, some of you don't. But we even had the progressed version of that. Give me wax for my board, keep me surfing for the Lord. I was like, Wow. Keep me surfing till the break of the sing, Hosanna. Those are good days. I remember Auntie Nelly used to write out the words on paper and we used to stick it on the wall, you know, the days before projectors. I can remember being in church when we had an overhead projector. We were progressive. We had an overhead projector and I remember Lindy... Founder Paul then used to sit with a ruler and move the ruler down as we sang the songs, you know, so you knew where you were. Great. People say it's the good old days. I don't think the projector was part of the good old days. But Pastor Zane was progressive. AOG, yeah, was the first AOG to have a, uh, over, uh, what do you call this one? A data projector. I remember the kids' church got it years after, and I remember that each pixel was about a centimetre by a centimetre. <laughs> it was huge. <laughs> but you see, the thing is that we need to learn to live, to walk with God. Um, church is a part of my legacy because I've lived in it. And because people have opened doors, because Pastor Zane and Auntie Erica came here with a vision, and they came here and they started youth ministry and Jolly J's where kids are cool and Jesus rules. I still have the stickers in my Bible. <laughs> I had to come 10 weeks to get that sticker. So <laughs> people are like, what's one of your greatest achievements? Well, I've got degrees and things like that, but I've also got a sticker from Jolly J's that took me 10 weeks to get. Um, talking about my childhood, I'm going to quote Winnie the Pooh. What day is it? Asked Pooh. It's today, squeaked Piglet. My favorite day, said Pooh. Today is a good day. And one day when is never going to come. But today is here. Today is here and we get to live in this day. Psalm 118 verse 24 says, This is the day the Lord has made. I will and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. In this day, in this day, I don't know what this day holds. We, don't, we only know what it holds up until half past 10. Before, after that, we don't know what it holds, but this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoicing is a state of mind. It is to say, let joy be here. Let joy be with me. Let joy be present. See, joy is a fruit of the Spirit. It's something that, that we get by the Spirit of God when we experience joy. But there is a rejoicing. That means that even though there may not be joy around me, I'm gonna rejoice here in this moment, in this day, in this time, and then I will be glad in it. I will be glad in it. You know, what we need to do so much more in our lives is bring joy into the mundane. In the morning, in your home, wake up before everybody else and speak joy over your family. Rejoice in the day that God has given you. Jesus Himself taught us to pray that we, we should pray daily, 
God's kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We should pray that we ask God to bring His kingdom here and now, that we may live as sons and daughters in the here, in the now. Pastor Daniel shared a quote with me on Friday and it worked so well in with my sermon, so I'm going to share it with you. It's from Dr. Miles Monroe and he says, Life is an accumulation of moments. Don't ever wait for tomorrow. Grab the moment and maximize it to its fullest because tomorrow you might not have. You might not have. Dr. Miles Monroe died in a tragic plane accident and he maximized the days that he had. He maximized the moments that he had here on earth that to this day, his leadership principles and practices are applied in churches all over the world. What are we doing with what we have today? We need to stop waiting for one day when and we need to live today. Live for this moment. See, the enemy is trying to steal today from us. He is trying to steal today from us, either by tarnishing us from what happened in the past or he's trying to scare us about the future. But what he steals is today. What He takes away from us is today. And that's what we need to claim. This day is the Lord's day. This is the day that God has made. In Psalm 90, it says, help us to remember that our days are numbered and help us to interpret our lives correctly. Set your wisdom deeply in our hearts so that we may accept your correction. A tough psalm. The psalm says here that our days are numbered and help us to live like our days are numbered. We don't know what the number is, only heaven does. We don't know what that number is, but what we have today needs to count. This day that we have today needs to matter, needs to make a difference and help us to interpret our lives correctly. I thank God for New Life Church because at New Life Church, the Word of God is honoured above everything. I have been taught to love the Word of God from a little boy. I've taught it in kids' church. I've taught it in youth. I've taught it in Bible studies. Everything we do at church is around the Word of God. And this Word tells us how to interpret our lives correctly. To set wisdom deep in our hearts, deep in our hearts, so that we may accept your correction. See, walking with God means that you're going to follow His correction. Walking with God doesn't mean that you're telling Him where to go. Walking with God means that He goes before you and He says, come this way, let's go here. And sometimes you don't feel like going there, but He will lead you. Let wisdom be deep in your hearts. Let wisdom be deep within you. Deep. When, when I came to this church, I, had a, I accepted Jesus here. And it was a message that Pastor Zane preached in the little building next door. It was smaller than the kids' churches now. And... Um, and I thank God for that day so much. It's very difficult when people ask the date. Some people have the date written in their diary. I don't have the date in my diary, but I can tell you everything about that day. I can tell you what the worship was before. I can tell you what Pastor Zane preached about <laughs> with his real hamburger and his fake hamburger. <laughs> I can remember walking home that night because I live so close to the church. I remember walking home with so much joy in my life. Couldn't wait to tell my mom and dad that I've accepted Jesus. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to tell everybody about it. I remember it so clearly. I thank God for a church that introduced me on the path with Jesus, that I could walk with Him. I thank God that we have a church that has believed in the next generation so much so that it's opened its doors to them. Because there are 10-year-old boys out there 
that are waiting for a place that's gonna accept them, that's gonna love them, that's gonna share the gospel with them, that's gonna tell them how much God loves them and how much He wants to walk with them. See, I believe in the power of the gospel, not because I've read it, not just because I've heard it, but because I have seen it in front of my eyes. I have seen miracle upon miracle. I stand in a miracle. This building is a miracle. I can remember standing here praying for this church as a 17-year-old boy standing on my Bible because we were that Pentecostal with a shofar, everything, and just believing that God was gonna build this building, that God was gonna do something great in our town of Mossel Bay. And I thought, what audacity, how crazy is it of me I thought, wow, you've really reached a point in your life of, you know, madness. But yet God unraveled to me and showed me as I walked with Him that He builds the impossible, that He does great things. And you see, every brick that's gone into this wall has a name and has a story and has somebody that's told a bit of that story. And I believe that what you're part of today is the greatest thing that we have on this earth. The greatest blessing we have is the church of Jesus Christ. To be a part of it, that our faith would have a home, that our faith would have some way to grow and some way to be safe. And I wanna encourage you to not wait for one day when. I wanna encourage you to live out the calling that God has given you now. Because every person that has played a role in my life has gotten me to where I am today. From my pastor to the people that made coffee, to the people that packed the chairs out for me, to the people that built the jungle gym, to the people that invested, to the people that sowed, to men and women that I mean, I don't even know all their names. I don't even know all of their stories. But I know that God has woven us into this that He's called His church. And it says that Jesus will build His church and the gates of hell will not prevail, will not break it down. You get to be a part of something that will be successful. You get to be a part of something that will grow. You get to be a part of something that has a return because the biggest joys I've experienced in my life have been because of this church. Everything that I have, I have because of this church. My story is a part of your story. And one day when I will be with Jesus and I get to look back and thank Him for every step of the way. I get to thank Him for every person they gave. I believe that the best days of new life are ahead of it. I believe that this church is gonna see revival in Mosselvay. I believe that this church is gonna grow more than it has ever grown before. And I believe that you are gonna experience God's joy in the land of the living. I believe it so much so because I've seen it. I've seen it every step of the way. And I'm so grateful that today when I stand here, I have a sad heart because of how much I love, because of how much I've been loved. But I have expectancy in me because of what God is building and what God is doing, that I know that the future is bright. I see it in our kids. I see it in the youth that we have today. I see it in young men and women that declare that God reigns. I see it in our songs that we sing. I see it in the way people connect. I see so many things that we're living in of dreams that we dreamt that, that have become reality. The best is yet to come and the best is yet to be there for us. I thank you so much for letting me go on this journey with you. I thank you so much for loving me the way I am and challenging me where I needed to be challenged. 
for having grace be a reality to me so that I can extend it to others. I pray that you continue with a call that God has in your life. And I pray that every leader in this church would feel supported and loved by you. I want you to know that the team that is staying behind you is the best team. Because I've worked with them, I know who they are. I know their hearts are pure. I know their love is real. I know they're authentic in what they do and what they believe. Somebody said that they've got big shoes to fill. They don't. I'm taking my shoes with me. (laughs) They cost way too much. God has given them their own shoes. He's given them their own calling. And they're going to step into it like they never have before and see God's grace and His goodness. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank You for moments of grace like this. For moments in my life and in our lives where we can just stop and just be so grateful for who You are and what You do. And I thank You, God, that Your love is an ocean. There is endless supply. So may we feel closer to Your love as we walk closer to who You are. May we live the days of our life like Enoch lived the days of his life. May we walk with You. May we see Your kingdom come here on earth just as it is in heaven. And may we always, always be found in Your grace, in Your love, in Your goodness. In Jesus' Name, Amen. God bless you, church.